Well, I'm Jeremy Pugh. Uh, I'm a writer and journalist and gadfly that's been around uh, writing about Utah for more than 20 years almost. Uh, currently, I'm the editor at Salt Lake Magazine. Previously, I wrote uh, 100 Things to Do in Salt Lake City Before You Die, which is increasingly not a great title. But, <laughs> um, well, but, uh, yeah, it's, which it's is a, a painful you truth. Know, <laughs> You know, it's a great like list of, of 100 things to do around around Utah, really. Um, it's in its second edition. Uh, and uh, just this May, uh, myself and my colleague, Mary Brown Maloof, who, who passed away uh, last, last December, uh, uh, finished this book, Secret Salt Lake, which is another guidebook, but uh, it's about all the weird and strange things in the city to explore. Uh, it's a guidebook as well, so everything has a location and again it's one of these uh ways to explore the city from a different angle and uh pretty proud of it crossover is there between the two books i would say 10 percent. you know i mean a lot of the things that would be in the hundred things are on this list but you know like i kind of always like to say like secrets hiding in plain sight you know if you if you grew up here a lot of these things aren't gonna be new to you but uh we did a lot of research and there's a lot of context for you know, things like the Masonic symbols, symbols on, on the LDS temple or, you know, Ted Bundy drank here kind of stuff, uh, you know, strange uh, grave sites in the Salt Lake uh, Cemetery and the history behind those. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's lore, it's urban myth, it's ghost stories, it's history, it's, uh, you know, a little true crime, uh, great art and murals and things like that. How'd you go about researching for this and deciding which things to put in the book? Um, well, you know, I mean, it started with a big list uh, and a little bit of crowdsourcing. You know, one of the ones that I, that I love is that in the first Sherlock Holmes book, this came from Ken Sanders, uh, which is a study in Scarlet was the very first the, the, the murder in that book, which, you know, sort of takes place in London, originated in Utah, was, was, was a lot of fun of like, kind of like connecting the dots uh, uh, from something so random as like a famous Sherlock Holmes novel to, you know, the desert in Utah in the 1840s. So why did you want to write the book? Well, I mean, first they asked me to no. um, so my publisher, <laughs> my publisher, yeah, my publisher, Reedy Press does, you know, they did the hundred things series and cities all over. And, and I was, you know, I thought it was pretty cool that they found me in the first place. And then they started developing the secret series, which they do in, you know, secret St. Louis, secret, you know, George, you know, Atlanta and all that. Um, and I was one of the first authors they, they tap because Utah is such interesting history you know mm -hmm. and it and I mean there's a lot of weird things you know that that I think you know <laughs> newcomers, yeah well it's you know it's entire sort of origin tale is I I unique in the United States you know especially the western United States because most of the western other western states like Colorado they, they're a pretty familiar tale they found stuff under the ground that they wanted digging up people moved there they dug it up you know they were, but utah was uh it's just a unique uh, american tale it was founded by the early latter-day saints uh who were fleeing uh uh illinois and um decided you know made this their home which you know and it was a place that at that time on the map was not technically in the United States. It was it was undisputed. It was before the Mexican American War, and just all of that history of this grand modern exodus, you know, with a lot of uh, religion and um, uh, people looking to practice their faith, sort of, you know, un, you know, like with themselves, and then just how hard it was to build this city you know and that's that's like the just like the foundational stuff and then over the years because of that you know basis you know there's also been a lot of just fantastic counterculture to that one of my favorites is the deseret alphabet this kind of goes back to early uh uh latter-day saint history um the 
the the church's leader Brigham Young. Uh, <laughs> well, he he really wanted to be apart from you know the rest of the country in the early days, um, <clears throat> and part of that was he invented a phonetic alphabet called the De well he didn't but his people invented a phonetic alphabet called the Deseret Alphabet. It's and, like Pig Latin. Um, no, it's it's a phonetic language meaning his goal was to. Uh, there was a lot of non-English speakers. It was a way for them to learn English and phonetic alphabets weren't um, unique. There's a, the, the Shavian alphabet and, and it was kind of a, a, I don't want to say a fad at the time. They established something called Unicode in the early history of personal computers that sort of established a standard for the way um, characters and things would be represented from one computer to another. It was kind of a big deal, but it was not, it's in the early days of computing. And one of the Unicode project people was a, was a, was a, 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 a Latter-day Saint and a church member. And the Deseret Alphabet is inside every personal computer. <laughs> you can find, you can find uh, if you deep down in the settings, you can find a, a font for the Deseret Alphabet. So it's sort of like just, it's like buried in everyone's computer, essentially. So and I explain how you can find it in your in your computer. Early days of Snowbird, the ski resort, you know, when they were sort of building the place, uh, Dick Bass uh, went and visited Zermatt, Switzerland, and met the mayor of Zermatt, because he was going around the world looking at other ski resorts, because he's building this brand new resort. And so the, in kind of the grand opening celebrations, the mayor of Zermatt, Switzerland brought a chunk of the Matterhorn uh, mountain uh, and you know presented it to the sort of the the mayor I guess if you will of of, of Snowbird and that that chunk of the Matterhorn sits on the tram deck and I'm sure people walk by it every day and it's just like a rock you know and it's got a plaque and things but I think it's really neat to be able to oh did you know and there's a lot of history behind it and it's just mm -hmm. something you might have passed every day if you're up you know skiing or playing around at Oktoberfest or something so right. you must be a, a blast at parties Oh, I'm full of full of useless knowledge. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah you know. Did boy, you I know? Can, yeah, did you know? You know things like the Enola Gay bombing was tested out in Wendover, Utah. You know when they were sort of prepping for the 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 to drop the big one, as it were, in World War II. Like they tested all the 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 bombing runs out at out of Wendover, and there's an air hangar out there and a little museum about the whole thing and. Um, and again, some you might drive by because it's on Wendover, Utah side. You're heading to Wendover, Nevada side. You just wouldn't even know it's there. Things in the book are things you can go and do or look at versus things to know. Um, all of them. I mean, it's a it's a guidebook. So everything has a location about it. Mm -hmm. um, some are a little more tenuous than others. But, you know, there there is definitely a location. The idea is that we, I hope readers will use this um to plan to explore your city yeah and and see your city through a different lens you know again things you may have just driven right by and not even given a second look i would think this would be a good housewarming gift for all those californians that have just moved to utah <laughs> the alleged the california like here, over yeah, utah. I mean, certainly, certainly you know the same happened with my first book is that it, you know it did become like a gift to give visitors or people who had just moved here, transplants or newcomers. But I also got a lot of feedback from, you know, like locals or people that have grown up here or spent a large month of their life that it, you know, a lot of like, I didn't even know about that, you know? And I, and this book I think is even deeper about that. Cause it is like, it's a lot more history and, and strange. It's not like go to lagoon. You know what I mean? Although I do have a... a is Lagoon a, in there? Lagoon is in there, but it's, you know, it's it's some specific things at Lagoon. They had diving you know. horses back in the day. Right, yeah. And, and, and it's a little bit more of like how this place came to be as opposed to like ride the white roller coaster. How long did it take <laughs> you to do the book, to write the book? I started this like three years ago. Um, and then you know, it, it kind of get, kept getting pushed back, you know, it's like a side project and, you know, and, and it was a more difficult book to write just because of the, the history and the research. Um, that's, that, whenever you pitch a story, that's the last thing you want to do is like a yeah. list of things. <laughs> you just make your job 10 times harder. You're like, <laughs> right, gotta you gotta go to a zillion different places. It's available uh, I, I, right now, 
obviously, I don't want to, anyway, it's a, the locally right now, it'll be available at, for sure at King's English and Ken Sanders. Uh, I'm sure Wellers will pick it up as well. It's obviously, it's available also in Barnes and Nobles and places like that. And you can buy it online at Amazon, but I'd rather you shop local. How long do you think it would take somebody to go through all those things in the book? Oh, well, probably about two years. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe we should set up set up a, a race or something and see if people could uh, could swing through it. I mean, honestly, I think it'd be like a great uh, like summer activity for you know a family to like you know just you know cherry pick a few of these and you know go go run around them and. Yeah. What is there in there that might be? not for the faint of heart like don't try this at home kind of thing anything <laughs> you know it's a, it's a strange little thing it's out it's out um uh west west of Tooele um and uh, you know quite a while ago these folks just started digging holes in the ground it's kind of salt salt flat and they made kind of an, a small little ocean where people can like get diving certified uh but certainly it's hot and it's it's a weird place i mean i've gone out and than scuba out there but it's just yeah i wouldn't it smells you know, too i wouldn't be i wouldn't be casual yeah it smells little. i wouldn't be too like i would i would like that's a planned trip yosepa which was uh it's a ghost town out west near bonneville near ish bonneville sea base in the sense that everything's kind of far away out there uh you know it's a it was a ghost town so in the in the late 1800s uh the lds church did a lot of proselytizing in the polynesian islands uh, and so a lot of uh, Hawaiians moved here and they, they stuck all these Hawaiians, for whatever reason, uh, out, uh, out on the other side of the okras in a place called Skull Valley. Uh, and it, it was, it, it, it's, the colony survived for a while, but it, you know, it was a difficult place to live. And certainly if you'd come from the Hawaiian Islands, uh, you know, which is the exact opposite of Utah's Western desert. It must've been a very hard place to adjust to. So a lot of them moved back. Spiral Jetty, that's one of the classics, but it's a, it's a little bit of a trek to get out there. Take a day, go out, see the Sun Tunnel Spiral Jetty, maybe stop by the Promontory Point, Golden Spike uh, historical monument, you know, but, but, you know, pack some water and some, the strange statue of, of the Sphinx with Joseph Smith's face. Uh, so, and, that, and that's really, honestly, again, it's kind of like <laughs> the example I use because it's such a funky little place. Um, and I'm so glad that it's been preserved. It was an outsider artist. Uh, he wasn't an artist. He was a mason. So he, he, he knew how to carve stone. And this was just kind of his backyard hobby. He had a, he just would bring all these rocks in there and carved them with all these kind of strange uh, Mormon doctrines, scriptures, but they're, it's really funky. And it's also just a nice little park. Thank you so much, Jeremy. I look forward to actually yeah. checking out the book. It sounds like a lot yeah. of fun, especially something to do this summer. Um, if it doesn't get too hot in certain places and you don't feel like getting on a plane going anywhere, you can kind of have a little staycation on the weekends with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I hope it'll add some richness to people's weekend plans. And certainly, you know, a lot of the stuff you can explore is outside and, and you know, a good way to like, kind of give yourself a treasure hunt, if you will, instead of just, you know, randomly doing something on the weekend. So yeah. And you can look at it as educational for the Yeah, level. also also educational. Yeah. Did you know? So <laughs> such a community superstar. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well thank you. thank you so much.